Yes, I'm a friendly Geordies fan. How could you tell? I have to say, the print's pretty nice. Fuck John Barilaro. Oh boy, it looks like the snail has delivered the mail. <laughs> and that mail being... <gasps> New album! It's called Valentine. I don't know what I'm in for. <laughs> Didn't care for her first record back in 2018, Lush. Thought it was just really, um, kind of dull coffee house indieisms just all jammed into a pretty uniform record just average at best real white girl shit real starbucks music all it was uh... but now she's back and i have to say she kind of did it on this record i think she's found it whatever it is because for all these artists i mean like they can't help but paint themselves into a corner a little bit, I think. And a lot of times with these sorts of records in these styles, it can be kind of hard to differentiate yourself from all of your contemporaries because the tenets of these subgenres are so kind of stringent. It's like if you if you like step out of it even slightly, it's like it's not even like indie anymore. It's like you're just making blues music. They used to be indie, but then they put one synth line in their song and now they're 21 pilots. Anyway, enough of that. <clears throat> We're just gonna kick off with the opening track, the title track, Valentine. Sci-fi synths, passionate, blaring chorus, lyrics about longing for someone who is obviously not very interested in you. Stop trying, they don't care about you, they don't give a fuck, they don't give a stuff. Okay? A really dynamic song structure on this thing as well. Always like that. So far, so good. Second track, Ben Franklin. Just as good, if not better. This one's a little bit more funky. It's a little bit more colourful and whacked out, I guess. More alien synth layers. Lots of sweet vocal layers and warm, round bass. Hmm. It's another track that I can get behind. It's certainly more personality-filled than her older material so that's a that's a plus madonna is a really sharp sweet piece of indie pop simple but memorable uh, guitar groove the tune is there kabasa is there c et al is, um i guess snail mail's attempt at an elliot smith song you might be shocked to hear that it actually goes over incredibly well really beautiful heartfelt sentiment on this track electric and acoustic guitar sort of harmonizing throughout it's a really slick guitar playing and there's a lot of detail in in the way that these riffs and these licks sort of coalesce with each other butter to the ears butter to the ears brother and the closing track m-i-a the closing track mia is <laughs> plotting pensive poignant lots of orchestra pit ornamentation and a really lovesick performance as well it's gorgeous it's so soft and gents just like a it's just like a it's just like a warm little hug automate is another heaping helping of minor key melancholy it's kind of buzzing quirky synthesizers rush in and out you know as like the chorus comes in and leaves again a pretty notable three four swing to it three four groove Three, four beat. Although these disparate and kind of unlikely elements do kind of overpower any ability for a a strong chorus or direct vocal line to really shine through. And the song itself does kind of meander without conviction through these sort of different phases of the track. Uh, it just kind of sounds like it doesn't quite know what it wants. Which is unfortunate because the sound of this track overall is really nice it's really pretty it's like a nice lovely spring walk through the park forever sailing groovy 90s pop in the vein of something like you know dido or natalie Im imbruglia i forget I, I always forget how to pronounce her name i never know or alanis morissette as well that's another one some really pronounced roads and subtle elements of strings and piano that just really sort of build this track out quite nicely uh although a song like this probably needs a bit more of a uh hook factor there is a lot of lost momentum due to the fact that the song doesn't particularly progress past this kind of rudimentary intro phase it's a bit lost in the sauce glory is a pretty glorious swaggered piece of indie pop 
more indie pop. This whole record is kind of indie pop. What am I talking about? Crunchy guitar. Really heavily relies on like power chords and, and just a really driving beat. Kind of sounds like something that might pop up on like a Beach Bunny or maybe a Hop Along project. Some bright summery solos on the back end. It's lovely. But some understated vocals and the fact that this song is kind of over before it really starts kind of uh, underwhelms me a little bit. The song Headlock had a lot of potential. There's some twangy, slightly sour guitar leads pretty safe instrumental palette on this thing and again it just holds back a little bit on the chorus when we get to the chorus it's just like i feel like it should just be blossoming but instead it 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 just crawls back into its shell why that's not what you do in a chorus you don't want your verses to be more exciting than your chorus the verse is meant to build up to the chorus the chorus is the whoa it's the explosion it's where all the magic happens man <laughs> And not only that, but the vocals themselves on this track are kind of, um, bland. Grayscale. That's a good word for it. <laughs> and that's unfortunate. Okay, because, you know, like, this could have been a really cool, nifty little, little rocker, but more like a, more like a get back under your rocker. Oh no, I've been a little bit critical towards a few of these tracks. Uh, sorry. Let this not take away from the fact that this album is still better than its predecessor. It's solid, it's well produced, and there are enough really nice musical ideas on here and some really kind of captivating songs. There's enough material here that I am pleased with how it has turned out. And for that reason, I'm going to have to score it a 7 out of 10. Perfect seven. Yeah, I was pleasantly surprised with this thing. I hope that you can continue to grow as an artist and deliver an even better project in the future. That'll be just so cool. Yeah, we're done here. We're done here. How do people do it? How do people end their video? How do you bloody pricks do it? So annoying. If you if you're deaf, you can you can just screenshot this. That's basically my review. Uh, until next time, suckers. Bye.